then for some reason I went back to Cornelia in the meantime. I, th I, I think I did some leveling up because I was getting my fucking ass handed to me. <laughs> or is this Cornelia? Yeah. No, that's the, the that's Elf Kingdom. Elf that's right, Elfheim. yeah. Elfheim. It, they, they have a limited number of city pallets. Give me a break. <laughs> um, it, it's... Yeah, Roadhouse is one of those movies I need to watch because I'm sure I will get a significant number of references. Mm -hmm. uh, the one you might want to watch is... Wait, have you seen Citizen Kane? No. You... You sh it's. I want to. It, it's, it is a good movie yeah. uh, for the purpose of this discussion. It's another one of those keys that unlocks a whole series of references. Once I watched Citizen Kane, I suddenly understood probably half the jokes in The Simpsons, which had just gone completely over my head. See, and that's... They, they, they've done yeah. so many bits, which are just lifted wholesale from Citizen Kane, that they could pro you could probably remake Citizen Kane with Simpsons footage. That's funny. Just the have thing. the audio of the movie playing, but just use moments from Citizen from The, the Simpsons. I, uh... And yeah, I wonder, that that's really funny you should mention that, because it makes me think, like, how many people see these references in, in current, like, contemporary media, uh -huh. and they're like, that's a Simpsons reference, yeah, and then exactly. some older guy slaps them real hard, and he's like, dude, that's a fucking uh -huh. Citizen Kane and the, reference. And the, the other one was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, I need they, a, yeah. they made jokes about that again and again and again on The Simpsons, because they, those guys just love, well, the older Simpsons anyway, they mm. love old classic movies, so... Yeah. In, in my case, I actually saw the play One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was fucking awesome, because uh, I had to go see it for class, but I'm mm. glad I had to go see it, or else I wouldn't have made myself go. But um, once I saw that, I suddenly got a whole other slew of Simpsons references, which again, had just flown over my head. And at this point, I'm like, fuck it, I'm not <laughs> fighting these wolves. Yeah, and this brings, in, this brings to mind another gripe that I hate about older games. Why give me the ability to run away if I can't reliably run away? It's right? like, yeah, you... I'm running away because I can't handle this. If I get my ass kicked, it, it, it just means I'm probably going to have to reload. All you're doing is costing me time. It doesn't necessarily increase the difficulty. It's I, just yeah. a pain in the ass. I would be down with you run away, but every time it's like you lost five gil oh, yeah, running yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, um, I think that did happen in... One of the Final Fantasies. I know I've played one or two games that do it, basically. Where you run away, you can run away, no problem. Yeah. But you will lose a little something. Usually money, because that's something you have. You mm -hmm. can just lose it. Yeah. Well, okay. and that's usually what you gain from besides yeah. experience. But exactly. It's shitty it's money and experience. experience. And, it's, and money is, in a way, experience. Mm -hmm. It's kind of experienced in the way that souls are experienced in Dark Souls, yeah. where it's like you have to invest it later. Yeah. And so if you're losing some of it along the way, it, it, it does feel a little painful, but it's less painful than getting your ass kicked by an encounter you couldn't handle. I love how these wolves are just standing in the swamp, by the way. They're like, we don't care. We're fucking... We're wolves. I don't, oh, I'm dead. And a big worm comes up and yeah. eats them, and, uh, and then the enemy changed to uh -huh. big-ass swamp worm. So we have to go... I had to go south here uh, to this this cave, which has nothing to do... <laughs> this cave has nothing directly to do with the prince. Uh -huh. um, I just looked at the guide, and it's like, go south to this fucked up cave. And so I, I made my way south, used this tent. God, it was brutal getting there. I spent a little <laughs> bit of time... If you've noticed the timestamps on the saves, I went from like 2 hours and 45 minutes to like 4.07 Fly. there, to go up two levels, because it also takes a long-ass time to level up. Now we're in the Marsh Cave. So, uh, these... This is the first big dungeon, by the way. So those bats, if you touch them, does that initiate the fire? Nah, you just talk to them and they oh. go like, Scree! <laughs> in fact, I think I talked to one here? Or no, this one's just in my way. It's the way old NPCs were. <laughs> oh man, I hate that. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> man, you're like, I need to walk past uh -huh. you, and they're just Especially in the when they're on a one square wide path, and it's one of these games where you can only move one square at a time. And then you move to the left to go around them, then they move to mm -hmm. their right, yeah. and you're like, what the... And then it's you just move... like, yeah. <laughs> am, I, am I just role-playing those awkward moments where I'm on the same path as someone in real life, but I go left and they go right? There were times in my life <laughs> where I found different ways of, of dealing with that, uh -huh. and one of them is to like awkwardly start dancing... <laughs> and then uh, another one time in my life, I, I just, if I'm like, I don't do this anymore because people just probably don't appreciate it. You just physically put your hands on the person and like shuffle them to the side. I did that like one time. <laughs> I was just, like, Sometimes you have, some yeah. people just don't get it. 
<laughs> the, the way I usually get around it is I'll see someone coming from a distance, and I will take the initiative to just do a hard shift. Uh -huh. Like, I'm on the right, and they're on, you know, the left. I will just... Ba I, I'll basically not even step forward. I'll just take a step to the side. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm on the left. But then sometimes they still veer to the side. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? So this is going pretty quick because I um, kind of save scummed it a little bit. Nice. Actually, uh, no, I was save scumming it. I was constantly doing the quick saves, but I managed to cut those out pretty cleanly. Nice. Um, but it does bring to mind another major gripe in that there's no consistency to how long you go between random encounters. Like, modern games will often... You can go a minimum distance mm -hmm. before your next encounter and a maximum distance before your next encounter, right? Like, yeah, you, you barring might, things like you walk through the trees. And yeah, the trees bar, and barring yeah. certain triggers or things like that, it's like I can at least expect to go, say, 10 steps before an encounter and no more than, let's say, 30 for an encounter. Uh... That doesn't exist here at all. It, it feels like every step simply has a chance <laughs> to generate an encounter. Because there there are moments where I went nearly the entire floor before this without getting into a fight. To the point where I thought I was gaming the system a bit. Because I, I, I it felt as though I could simply go a certain distance before... I could go a certain distance after doing a quick save mm -hmm. before it would spring an encounter. I thought I was literally but exploiting the game. You were just getting lucky. <laughs> yeah. I was just getting extremely lucky, but I thought I was just exploiting the game system by, like, going 10 steps, saving, <laughs> going 10, 10 steps, saving. And it that seemed to be the case because I went through that whole level without an encounter. And then, but there are moments... But, but, but then I started noticing that sometimes I'd get into an encounter one step after saving. And then I realized how busted the, the RNG is in this game. Because you can go literally one step and then an encounter. One <laughs> yeah. step and an encounter. You might you might go down a single hallway and get into five encounters and you've traveled that distance. Damn. It, it's rarely that bad, but because it seems to be that every step has the chance of being an encounter, there is the chance of that happening. And when you play a 20-hour RPG, you're going to roll enough dice that you're going to get a bad string like that eventually. Wasn't one of the stats on the save screen how many steps you've taken? Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, it tracks that and this one and two and a number of them do that actually. How did you just heal the werewolf by attacking it? Did I don't do know. <laughs> did that happen? <laughs> it I didn't looked notice. like it got like a green. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Up. The the werewolves um automatically heal at the end of the turn. Oh. So it's a good thing I didn't mm. buy that steel plate because I just found one here. Nice. Yeah. Some dude just save myself like 800 gil. Someone just battled all these wolves and just left his armor. Like here we go, <laughs> leave us here. Fuck it. Now Geo I'm gonna die. Geocaching. <laughs> oh, and fucking blood bones. Yeah, and, I know. And skeletons and their pet crawler. It's all these skeleton warriors and the crawler. They all have that cool like. Are those shoulder pads or a bandana? I, I think they're shoulder pads because they have one on either side and they appear to be uh, over the shoulder. Some sweet looking bones. Mm -hmm. But I, I am taking into account all these gripes that I have because I, I am giving significant thought to this RPG RPG idea in my mm -hmm. brain. And I just haven't played many modern RPGs because I don't care for most modern RPGs. Mm -hmm. Not even that they're bad. It's just I, I play like a lot of them these days are just taking the, the Bethesda route. Even Bethesda's games yeah. I don't necessarily care for. Like Fallout 4, I fucking hated. That that's a Fallout 4 is a cynical jalopy game. <laughs> it's it's barely a game. It's just an assemblage of rickety parts <laughs> that are functioning just enough. <laughs> they have to get you where you need to go. Yeah. It's just a fucking jalopy game built by people who are like, we basically want to make Minecraft, because that's big with streamers. God, but that's disgusting. It, it is gross. But you know, playing a an old Final Fantasy like this and thinking about what would I want to bring into a, a modern game and then playing modern games I do care for like Bravely Default mm -hmm. where I, I look at the quality of life improvements they've added there and mm -hmm. it's like well increasing the amount of experience and the speed of battle and all yeah. that like it doesn't decrease the difficulty because when you get to a boss mm -hmm. in that game if you yeah. don't know how to actually fight he will yeah. rock your ass oh yeah real quick right like you, you do need to know how to fight, but the just, I need to level up phase, the I need to acquire gill phase, if that takes 40 minutes or 10 minutes, 
doesn't affect the game itself. Yeah, and that's, or yeah. my especially because it's not competitive. It's a single player experience, and these are the <laughs> that looks like fucking some Dark Souls. That version. no 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 no. Um, <laughs> this game I'm surprised never uh, came up in some kind of lawsuit with whoever owned Dungeons and Dragons because that's a mind flayer. Oh yeah, that is a goddamn Cthulhuid mind flayer. Straight and I think later I think a stronger versions of the enemy are called mind flayer. Um. Uh, one thing this game likes to do is to put a little trigger right in front of a box so that when you step onto it, you get into a boss battle or a semi-boss battle, which these aren't bosses. They're just stronger than normal enemies for this area. Later on, you can like six of them at a time, but they're no problem. Um, but when you step onto that, you get into a fight and then you open the chest and you get whatever. Uh, this one, I actually did a soft reset on several times because <laughs> it would spawn three of them and they would just blast me with some sort of magic, which would wreck my party. Uh, in this case, it only spawned two for some reason, and they didn't use that magic that was wrecking my world at all. Ooh, so six hundred gil, and they good. dropped a good amount of gil. But uh, yeah, that some, looks like a special place, right? Yeah, there, exactly. Right? Uh, but something interesting that got the crown came all the way down here for a crown. But uh, something interesting that now I have to go all the way back up. Oh boy! So two points, real quick. Something interesting that this game does is that it doesn't. Um, once those triggers where a, a boss like that pops up, um, they didn't have the programming know-how, or they just neglected to do it, to remove that trigger after you beat the enemy. So if for any reason oh. you need to go past that point again, and sometimes you do, because sometimes those are on critical oh, paths, shit. you will oh just my God. have to fight the enemy again. You can exploit <laughs> that at one point, because there's, a, there's a, a monster called like a death gaze, which you can kill in one hit, it gives you a decent amount of money and experience, and if you really want to grind at levels, the fastest way to do it, just take a step going, to the left, and then take a oh step to God. the right, and fight the thing. Step to the left, step to the right, step to the left, step to the right. Second, um, <laughs> something I particularly appreciate about modern game design is the ability to get me out of a dungeon immediately. Yeah. Either by allowing me to find a shortcut that takes me right to the beginning, warping me to the beginning. A rope. Or, give me, uh, <laughs> yeah, give me a rope or a spell that does escape. it, or yeah. giving me a story beat where basically it's like, okay, let's go back to town, and then we're. Like, they even did that yeah. here with the the chaos temple, right? We save the princess, yeah. and then she's yeah. like, okay, let's go back to town, and then we're just back in Cornelia, and they're like, oh, thank you for saving the princess. I like how every once in a while Meatman like covers his junk with a. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a actually, buckler or something. When he actually blocks, yeah, yeah. Like, not the junk, please. <laughs> nope. What's great in Final Fantasy 2 is that uh, the fastest way to improve your characters is to have them attack themselves. Oh, fuck. It's possible for a character with a shield to block <laughs> yeah. their own attack. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so dumb. What's he doing? Is this a, some kind of What's new this training? It's just... It's, what I, is this technique? It's, it's so um, strong. Just imagine the enemy like being terrified because they don't know what this technique is where they're just banging their own shield. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> no. I'm gonna leave. There's a. Uh, go north to this guy and show him the crown, and he laughs. There's like, a ha, fools. In, in bravely default. There's a move that the freelancer gets called like misdirect or something uh -huh. like that, and it lowers your own aggro on that character because it makes it appear as if you're less of a threat. Oh yeah. And so uh -huh. you basically get down into <laughs> like a fucking like a child's pose and bang your head on the floor, <laughs> and you're, you're and then they're like, okay, I guess I don't need to fucking fight that guy. <laughs> oh, man. He's doing a good enough job and, on his own. Look at that dance. I know, and here's the king of the Dark Elves, Astos. Wait till you see his his model. <laughs> oh, my God, how did you not know that thing was evil? He was he was dressed up as a regular king. He like, had an illusion going. All elves just look like that when yeah. they're more detailed. It's like, Basically. what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, ugly? <laughs> Astos. Has he got like two. A two damage my monk did right there. Got like a six pack going on? I think I so, know, yeah. Something. Like my, my warrior did 66 damage. My monk did two. <laughs> oh. Now, late in the game... What the, the fuck did that just... De that would have been death. Just ripping your soul out? Basically, All, yeah. All like Final Fantasy... Rip, rips your soul out. Spirits within. Basically. Right? <laughs> rip, rips your soul out, and then the Grim Reaper fucking suplexes your soul. <laughs> that, that's radical. <laughs> I'm dead, but that's radical. <laughs> your, your character says that yeah. as he's dying. It's fucking radical. Uh, like, at the end of the game, you'll see that the monk slash black belt or master, whatever his name is, is a fucking beast. Yeah. But that's the end of the game. 
The other 90%, I'm like, I wish I'd just taken another warrior. <laughs> I wish I'd taken two warriors, because the problem with the Black Mage is that, well, he only has like three casts of his spells, and his lower level spells, which I have more casts of, are functionally useless. Is that a, is that kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons thing? Like you can only take off with so many casts of your spell? Yes, uh, they, they've changed it in the more recent editions, but the way it had worked until recently is that um, wizards and sorcerers, the two, and, and clerics, the, the various casters, they have... By the way, we got the Crystal Eye for beating him, so now we're going on another step of the quest to save the Elf Prince. Mm. But uh, the caster classes, they have their spell levels, and they have a certain number of casts per level, which increase as they level up, obviously, but they, they can still only use that many spells in a day, is the way it works. And then, then they need to rest. Okay, And yeah. the, how rest is defined varies depending on race and maybe other abilities that they have. Um, but they basically need to... Basically what they're doing is they are pre-casting the spell in their mind. And then in the moment of battle, they're just uh... finishing it off. Like, they, they just, they're basically loading up their spells into a spell gun. Okay. Yeah. And pulling the trigger, <laughs> basically. That, that sounds like a fucking, like a metal band spell, spell gun. gun. <laughs> that's not, that would be a fucking sweet, like, I don't know, like, f folk metal band yeah. or something. I don't know. <laughs> spell gun? Yeah. Hell yeah. I think there's a band called, like, Electric Wizard or something like Probably. that. Probably. Probably. Spell gun. <laughs> <laughs> I would go to see Spellgun, even, would, if yeah. their, even if their music sucks. I almost want to like design I'm a, a cobra. I want to design a shirt for a band you called should Spellgun. Just, you, not this even this isn't going up until January. <laughs> you should just like draw a fake album cover for yeah, Spellgun, and I'll yeah. throw it up there. Spellgun, <laughs> and then some of their their songs. <laughs> just okay. all like I don't know. It's, what could they be? Just like let's see, Spellgun. It it probably be things like Firaga. Fira yeah. <laughs> That's one of their songs. Firaga, um... Power Word Rock. <laughs> yeah, there's one. Power Word Rock. That's a fucking rad song. Yeah, it is. For Spellgun. Yeah. So, what that thing is saying is, um, start and circle. You may have noticed that so far I haven't brought up the world map. Yeah. It's because in order to bring up the world map, you need to hold down circle and press start. So what that, that Fantasia broom is telling you to... It's telling you how to bring up the world map. Here's the fucked up thing, though. It's saying start, then circle. That's a lie. It's, <laughs> it's circle, then start. Which is very important. Because I, yeah. I was pressing start and circle, and nothing yeah, was happening. Yeah. I'm like, maybe there's just not a world map. And then by chance, I'm like, this is stupid, but what if I reverse it? And then it worked. What did it even say to you exactly? It said flip, flip, flip over, and then backwards it said start, then circle. And so basically, we, we brought the crystal eye to this witch so that she can see. And we had to get the crystal eye from the, the yeah, Dark King yeah. Astos, and in order to fight him, yeah, we had to get the crown. Holy fuck. Yeah, and now she's going to give us medicine. This most wondrous potion, which is basically just Jolt Cola. <laughs> no, really. No, Meatman, don't Jolt drink Jolt Tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Meatman, don't drink that. Mm. It's really spicy. Don't eat those. <laughs> don't eat those chicken <laughs> wings. They're really spicy. <laughs> I love how that song just gets increasingly, yeah. like, monstrous as uh -huh. he says he's never seen a man eat so many chicken wings. Yeah, an antidote, a potion, yeah. Yeah, that song, is, I really enjoyed that song. It's actually a very it's good a song, It's a really fucking it? cool song. It's incredible what talented musicians Matt and Trey actually are. Like, it starts off as this kind of, like, drinking, like, bar, like, Punk song. Yeah. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, uh -huh. bum, ba, bum. You know, I want to learn like... how to play that on a violin, by the way. Once I actually get a handle on things. Yeah, I'll learn it too on guitar yeah. and we'll just go to town on it. And then, like, yeah, and then it has, like, that fucking breakdown for the, you know, no, don't, those chicken wings really spicy, don't eat those. And then it gets, like, really fucking heavy and then back uh -huh. into, like, the fast kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a cool song. I should also set my phone to uh, vibrate. <laughs> Wolves. Toss it over there. Now we're going all the way back south to bring that jackass, the Joe Cola, to wake him up. <laughs> oh, I thought they stopped making these things, bro. No, you can still find it, but mostly in like shithole grocery <laughs> stores. I, I think you can still get it in Idaho, for instance. That's be yeah, anywhere no. you can find Four Loco, you can probably find Jolt. Yeah, is the <laughs> that's the bellwether. I was uh, 
what, what fucking holiday was it? I don't even remember. I was walking around uh, up in Capitol Hill, uh-huh. and there was just a case of Balls energy drink, and I'm oh, like, Jesus that's Christ, a relic I forgot from about Balls. Yeah, that was everywhere for about four years. Oh man, but it's called Balls. Get it? Wherever they were, geeks. Man, you got some Balls. Oh, <laughs> there was another energy drink called. Oh man, what was it called? It was something cider. It, but oh, but it, um, there was a pun uh-huh, like it was yeah. like a uh, like something in insider. Oh fuck, I don't know. Hmm. What it was called. I, I don't know, but it was like the joke was like it's oh man, like I got myself insider or uh-huh. something. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> uh-huh. but it was real stupid. Like that's pretty bad. But it, that's probably it because like, that's so bad. Like energy drinks sold on a pun. Uh huh. <laughs> Just so you can say a joke that isn't good, you have to drink this toxic shit. Like, that was a marketing thing mm-hmm. that worked oh, yeah. so, so well. So right there, they gave us... Um, Dick and Cider. Dick, Dick and Cider. Cider. Jesus Christ. Oh, man, I got a Dick and Cider. Uh, that was it. But um, right there, they gave us a, a mystic key. We I, I, I haven't encountered any of them on video, but throughout the first part of this game, you keep encountering uh, doors, which it says are... It's like, this is a mystic door or whatever, and it's just, it's locked, and you need that specific key to open it. And now that I have that, I'm able to go around the world and open them and get some special Ooh. early game goods. Like the Mithril Hammer, which is, I think, the last weapon she'll ever be able to equip. You know, maybe this is just uh, because it's sped up and stuff, but it, it seems like from the beginning of this game where you're like, there's nothing... I have nothing, and uh-huh. this game seems like a nothing game. But now you're like at level two spells. You got like I do have some level two spells, and level three stuff, armors, but and then reasons to backtrack mm-hmm. is kind of oh. a big deal. Oh, it is, it, I, and that and that plays into how well, just how incredibly open this game is. It's like there's all the there's all this stuff you come across, and it's like this door is locked. This, you know, you, you need to come back here. You can go to this dungeon, Fuck, but yeah, you necessarily need to. Shit, man. I That's am, awesome. and th- this this equipment will certainly help for the near in the, for the near future. Uh, obviously, it's all going to get replaced. This is the only one you need nitro to go into because you get nitro powder, which is necessary to progress out of this goddamn place. You're gonna blow some shit up. Gonna blow some shit up. After I go a little bit south and find some elves. Yeah, I think like how how does the sell back price on these items like you know like the four thousand gill? Oh, item, I, like I, I think to... it's the general half. Yeah, that, that most most RPGs have where it, it's half of whatever the vendor price is, you can get it back. You know, it'd be really cool to look up, or if we had fans, have one of them answer us. Mm. Is what was the first RPG that allowed you to? If you were in a shop and you sold something and you went, oh shit! Oh and yeah! And then there was the I was buyback. Just thinking about that, yeah. Like the first game that uh-huh. allowed that to happen because man, what a quality and li- a quality <laughs> of life, you know, enhancement yeah. that was. It is not. It's so rare, but it is nice when they have something like that. Whether it's because you you buy something on accident or you realize it's not actually as good as you thought. Mm. Where it's like if you just sell it back within a certain amount of time, if you sell it back to the same vendor you bought it from. Or if you sell it back before you leave the menu, it's yeah. like they'll buy it back at the full price. I can't even. I know I've seen that mechanic before. I just don't remember where it was. Yeah, it pops up sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, thank goodness for that. <laughs> this fucking ogre with his disgusting ass pets. I know. I know, right? Just walking, around, taking his gigas worms out for a walk. <laughs> I guess if you're a big ugly ogre, you'd probably like big ugly worms yeah. too. <laughs> Yay, we killed we killed a guy and his pets. He wasn't doing nothing. So now we had to go to Mount Dwergar, which I, I believe is... What is Dwergar from? I think that's also from Norse mythology. I think that's where the, the dwarves are from. Yeah, it sounds like a very dwarven yeah. name. Yeah, and these are all dwarves. It's hard to tell because of the, <laughs> the, the you know, the sprites. But... Are you gnomes? No, <laughs> fucker. And this guy just wants to blow up. He just wants to blow this shit up so bad, but he has no nitro powder. And now he's super stoked. Like how your character follows slowly behind, uh-huh. and they're all like, "What is he doing?" And then they all come out <laughs> to watch. Like, just what's fucking going there we on? Go now, we just blast this rock to smithereens. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you guys better move like a lot more. I think this guy's just not practicing any proper safety precautions. Just packing this powder in there, like... 
using like a rock to hammer it into the rock <laughs> even harder. Mmm. Mmm. And just like stuff nice and tight. It. Yeah. That's how you get a good explosion. Yeah. And now this whole nice. This is a pretty land bridge, isn't it? Oh yeah. no. Oh, it's gone. Oh shit. Granted, the, the, the dwarves are the only ones who live up there, and they tend to be pretty curmudgeonly and don't want any any visitors, but it, I don't know. Maybe you could have just like carved something that people could sail through. There's some good beats in this game, like that. That's uh -huh. a really good, oh, like, yeah. you would feel, you know, really They're, accomplished playing that in a game. Like, they, they are, they, they do feel very significant. You know that you've, you, you've polished off a step in your journey, and you know that your, your ability to journey has been further expanded. Mm. It, it, it is this feeling of release and then expansion. Yeah. Then this was another mystic door. It's a good, like, you know, yeah, just... I don't. I mean, up until this point, I don't know if many games had things like that that made you feel like, I mean, they, wow. They, they tended to have them in very small doses. The the, the flags in Mario yeah. are a very tiny version of that, but here, obviously, it's much more significant. And this is a pretty good cave, because I just got, like, Mithril Mail. And I think yeah. another Mithril Weapon as well. Did I? Okay, yeah, he has a Mithril Sword. Grand Helm. Worm Killer, which is actually weaker, but... That's such a sweet name yeah. for a sword. I like any sword that's named specifically for what it should be used to kill. Mm -hmm. You get a few of those in here. They're pretty good. There's Worm Killer. There's, like, Wear Pain. That's why Mage Masher is always one of my favorite that, names. Yeah, that's my... I think that's my single favorite weapon in the Final Fantasy, because A, it pops up so often, and B, I always know what it is. Just I, fuck mages. I know, it's great. I, I just always really liked that. I, I, and Bravely Default, when you find one and you read the flavor text, you're uh -huh. just like, God, that's fucking great. It's and like, then I went yeah. out to my boat, and I took it all the way to the, all the, way to the canal, <laughs> and I'm going to the city, which is conveniently right there. Shark? Look at this shark. How did he get up on there? You think he'd be like totally... <laughs> Why is he in that sassy pose? Yeah, like he was just sunbathing. But you know, like, that's... <laughs> I don't get it. Like, how did it get on deck? And how is I? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd be scared as uh -huh. fuck if there was a shark or on just deck. Not on deck. But it's putting itself at a clear disadvantage. Yeah. Bless the crystals. There it is. I think that's the first one. And this place is fucked because the earth crystal is nearby, and the earth is the first thing starting. It's been rotting the longest, basically. Oh. And we'll get into that since this video is about to end. I'll get in eight thousand gil now for the level five spells, and I still don't even have the level four or the level three spell. Fuck. I like how the the names I'm assuming that can't use those spells were blurred out a little. Yeah, a little bit, and they really tease me here because they have like warp and exit, uh, where it's like warp will take you to the next level. It'll take you like one floor up in the dungeon. Exit will take you out of the dungeon completely. I'm like, oh, that'd be so nice. But you can't use that until you upgrade your casters into wizards more than halfway oh. through the game. But it's available like, right now. And they must have known. Like they must have known. To put that spell in there to begin with. And you with. can't cast that even though you can cast other spells at the same level with the base class. 